afternoon, everyone. My name is Michelle Anderson, and I am a PhD student at the University of New Mexico. And I will be, will be presenting the paper on advantageous construction techniques for ECC overlay. Uh, the authors on this paper also include Dr. Susan Bogus, Dr. Gabriel Acer, Ricardo Hugari, and Dr. Marwa Hassan. Uh, in this presentation, I'll be talk, taking key points from the paper to include a brief background of ECC, then we'll go into a full-scale overlay project using ECC and Portland cement under ultra-thin white topping construction conditions, and wrapping up the presentation discussing the cost savings from the construction techniques used in this project. So on the background for ECC, uh, what you were using was initially developed by Dr. Victor Lee of the University of, New, of Michigan in the early 1990s. There are several advantageous properties of ECC that um, make it conducive for roadway pavement in particular, such as the pseudo strain hardening. The ductility qualities and the tensile strength greater than conventional concrete we have micro mechanics of the ECC, including the self-healing properties that allow micro cracking to let moisture diffusion into the unhydrated uh, cementous particles and, and continue the healing process. Now, durability testing on ECC has determined that uh, it's a product that resists deterioration to include corrosion from de-icing salts, creep, sulfur attack, freeze thaw, and ASR. And finally, ECC reduces shrinkage crack. It's due to the bridging mechanics from the fibers used in the material. Now with all these positive and great properties of ECC, why aren't we seeing this material used in construction? Well, the main reason is cost. The cost of the original ECC was dev dis, uh, developed around microfine silica, as has been pointed out in the two previous presentations, polyethylene fibers, and very large quantities of Portland cement. Now, in this project, we did one of our first kind, a full-scale comparison test of ECC ultra-thin white topping to the conventional PCC ultra-thin white topping. And the constructability we used, we wanted it to be cost efficient. So a low amount of PVA, we use PVA fibers in this particular mix. We used a high uh, fly ash, we used uh, class F fly ash, and that lowered the amount of cement quantities. And then we used the local sand and this was the, uh, the testing between ECC and conventional PCC. And then another one was construction techniques. We did not use saw cut joints in the ECC, something that's required for PCC. Now, as uh, Dr. Bogus said, this was a big collaboration between LSU, the uh, Tr Louisiana Transportation Research Center, and the LADOTD, as, as well as the University of New Mexico. The construction project was done on the LADOTD pavement research facility. Now on this sketch, we're looking at, this is the layout of the, um, of the project. It was a one lane, approximately 12 foot by 180 foot. We used existing pavement old pavement that was at the research facility. It was a hot mix asphalt. The ECC was, uh, we used, we went for 60 feet using a depth of two and a half inch ultra thin white topping over the um, milled um, HMA. And then the next 60 feet, we went for a four inch depth of ECC over the milled pavement. And in the final 60, 60 feet, we used a four inch conventional PCC. Within each section, 
approximately centered, there was gauges and, sen and sensors were located. So this is a quick uh, overlook, uh, overview of what we went on. For the first 180 feet of the uh, existing old pavement was milled by a contractor. Then forms were constructed and the sensors and gauges were set in position. Uh, forms were used because we couldn't get a full depth pavement uh, milling, which would be an actual construction that was to bring it back up to a uh, finished grade. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Then finally, the ECC, two trucks of ECC arrived. Uh, we had a professional construction crew uh, for and uh, finish the ECC as well as the PCC. And talking to the workers afterwards, they said this was the quickest and easiest laying of 120 feet of ECC material they've ever had. And uh, they were very impressed with it. Now, we did have a couple construction issues during it. One was during the milling operation, we had subsurface water and the it was right at the construction joint where ECC stopped and PCC began and the water bubbled the entire time until the ECC had completely set up. So this is going to be a good post project test once we are able to do coring to find out if the additional water uh, influence the ECC in any way. Uh, and then finally, we had clumps and fibers in the second truck. The first truck came through, pour was easy to do and quick. First truck left, the second truck arrived uh, much later than anticipated. And when it began the pour, large clumps of material became, started coming down the chute almost like skulls coming down the, the chute into the, uh, the pore area. Uh, at first, the workers kind of tossed them off to the side until we figured out this is primarily fibers. And so we collected all the fiber clumps, got them back into the mixer, did a rapid mix and put it all together and began pouring again and there were no more clumps. So that problem was eliminated. But initially, uh, we can see that it needs uh, complete mix, uh, mixing within the drum of the mixer truck in order to preclude having these type of clumps again. And I just put the water bottle there so you can see how big these clumps really were. Okay, now we're looking at the PCC end of the 180 foot roadway pavement job. Uh, for PCC, it is already established that saw cuttings must be done for a four inch depth of ultra thin white topping. The saw cuttings are done in a four foot by four foot pattern. And these particular ones were one and a third inch deep. We use the D over three rule. On the far end, the brighter white you can see is the ECC pavement and there are no cracks in it. Now looking down at the sketch, uh, you'll see in between station 160 and 120, initially during the first approximately 60 days after the pour, uh, cracks were found in this particular area. Now this is the area where truck number one trailed off and ended its pour. Truck number two came in about 30 to 35 minutes later and began its pour by pouring over what was left of truck number one, bringing it up to the level and then continuing down. Uh, we're thinking that there was probably a cold joint that formed in that 30 minutes or so of exposed time between trucks. We won't find out for sure until the um, entire project is done that's including the uh, load testing. And then we can do coring in there to see 
if that was the cause of these particular cracks. So what were the construction techniques for cost savings that we found in this project? Well, like I said, in interviewing the professional concrete workers, they said this was very quick and easy to lay down the ECC. It was, um, is primarily due because of the lightweight. ECC doesn't have uh, coarse aggregate. It has the fibers and fine aggregate. Uh, so ECC weighs about 104 pounds per cubic foot compared to the PCC at about 143 pounds per cubic foot. Therefore, the ECC ultra thin white topping screening, striking off and floating and brooming was much faster than the conventional PCC. Um, the other problem, the other fine findings were the um, PCC ultra thin white topping screen and floating took, it took a longer time compared to ECC, but it took a normal amount of time for PCC, having do, been project managing over piece, um, concrete projects for 12 years, PCC takes longer to screed off and finish because you have to take get the coarse aggregate below the surface and bring the cream up to the top to make a good surfacing and that takes time and we found that the ECC was quick because there wasn't the problem of the coarse aggregate to be covered over in the boom finishing. Um, the other problem the other thing that we found out is the uh, PCC required more construction time overall because the PCC you still had to, we had to wait with a crew of three until the PCC hardened enough so they could do the green saw cutting. Green saw cutting is the first cut you do once the PCC has hardened enough to hold the weight of the saw cutting machine. So that was approximately four hours of time waiting, paying the crew, and uh, is one of the costs. So now we did not have to do any saw cutting on the ECC for this project, and that was part of it. We wanted to see how far we could go. And pretty much other than the five initial cracks, very few other small cracks have been found afterwards. But for the most part, we can conclude on this one that it's a much faster pour and finish using ECC. We had no saw cutting costs or additional time. This ECC if, is going to be a in, out, and done type of a material. That is saving money. Construction time is money. And uh, this is one of the biggest um, cost advantages that we found. So this is a conclusion of advantageous construction techniques for ECC overlays. Any questions? Um, <clears throat> all right, thank you, Michelle. Um, any, uh, we have time for some questions, if anyone has any questions. Actually, I would just like to make a clarification. This is uh, Dr. Gabriel Arce here. Um, for the two and a half inch ECC uh, layer until today, there's no crack. So uh, that section is in pristine condition after more than a year. It has no joints and is uh, 60 feet long. And uh, the other layer that uh, Michelle mentioned, the uh, four inch, the one that has these uh, small cracks, this, uh, again, as she uh, explained it, we believe is because of the issues in construction with this second truck, where we had this fiber clumping, and also the possibility of a cold turn. So just wanted to mention uh, what is the status today of the, of the project. Woo, great, that's good to hear. That's great to hear that. <laughs> All right, great. Any other questions before we move on? All right, great. Well, thank you, Michelle. We will move on then to our last presentation. Um, our last presentation, um, the speaker is going to be Ricardo Hungria uh, from Louisiana State University, 
and his talk, it's a slightly different um, adjusted title from what is in your program, but the title is Interface Bond Characterization of Engineered Cementitious Composites, ECC, in Pavement Applications. Um, so Ricardo, go ahead and uh, try to share your screen. Hi, Dr. Bogus. Uh, this is my screen. All right. All right, great, we can see your screen. Okay. Good afternoon, dear all. My name is Ricardo Ungria. I'm a PhD student from Louisiana State University. And the topic I'll be presenting today is the interface bond characterization of engineered cementitious composites, ECC, in pavement applications. ECC, also known as bendable concrete, is a novel type of hyperfiber reinforced cementitious composite that is characterized by its high ductility under uniaxial tension. This remarkable attribute is reflective in its flexural performance. In the first picture, we see an ECC beam under third point bending test. And in the second image, we see a flexural performance graph that compares three different cementitious materials. The first material is concrete, represented by the black dashed line. Concrete, after reaching its